Hello and welcome to Flam Flam. Now, tantrums are a normal part of child development. Yes, in case you didn't know and thought your child was just being stubborn, no, it's a very normal part of child development. Uh, it's how young children express themselves, especially when they are upset or frustrated. And it may happen when they are tired, it may happen when they are hungry or uncomfortable. And they can have a meltdown even just because they have failed to get something or you've refused to give them a toy or you refuse to buy them something at the supermarket. And so today as moms, we want to talk about tantrums, what our experience has been and what our thoughts are in terms of how you manage a tantrum how you have managed in Angie's case because I'm guessing her kids don't throw tantrums anymore. So ladies, um, this is something that really disturbs moms um, in general and a lot of moms are confused about what to do, are confused about how to handle their kids tantrums. Some kids tantrums last a very long time. What has been your experience and what are your thoughts about how to manage a tantrum? Um, yeah, thanks Rachel and um, I like the fact that you say because it's my view as well that tantrums are just, you know, failure for people to express themselves. Um, this is mostly anger or frustration. And so you find yourself bursting with emotion. And though it happens in children a lot, even in adults, like even in life, guys, there are people you reach a point in So you just bust and everything comes out because you, you can't find the words to really say to express yourself without abusing someone and their family and their relatives and everybody, wishing, wishing them to death. So I, I think it's just one of those things. So for children, mostly all factors constant because I'm sure there are so many different um, things that could lead to this. But um, I can understand it more because their vocabulary is none to limited, really. So imagine you have things to say, you, you're not happy with things, you've not yet been guided on how to deal with, you don't even know the word thank you, or please, or you can't even say sorry. May someone expect, how do you say that? And remember for the longest part, for maybe one to one and a half, you have an adult thinking for you, are you hungry, are you tired? So I think it's just a transition. So my issue, so it will be maybe just to guide, to be able to guide the children as they grow, to be able to communicate in a more mindful manner. My mother always uses the expression, my mom is a teacher, she, she uses the expression, use your words. And it's now become a common saying in my family that um, if you want to be understood, if you want to get what you want, that's how the tank is one of the most powerful organs you have on your body. So she'll just tell you, just use your words. My issue mostly would be maybe the frequency. Ideally, if it's happening all the time, like every single day, I think that would be a cause for concern. So in my view, I would think it should be able to get less frequent and less aggressive with age. So just to be honest, to put all my cards there on the table, because I've always been those mouths. Kali, when I'm speaking to parents, I always tell the barangay, watch out for the triggers of their children, listen to your children, pay attention, be present. Now, yeah, for me, when my son was young, I would just ignore him, guys. I would ignore him. And I would wait for him to become hungry. <laughs> so when I'm advising other people, I, I try to be diplomatic. But guys, let me tell you the power of hunger. When hunger sets in, the transfer of power shifts back to you, the parent, because a kid has to eat. <laughs> My little kid would stay outside, outside, and guy gets annoyed. He goes and knocks for the neighbors. Uh, my, my, my mommy, my mommy, I don't want, I don't want, I don't have, then he would get hungry and I would always tell them, never feed him. Don't give him anything. The boy would come back slowly. I just hear someone, shua, 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 shua. <laughs> I look the other side, the Ingalutesha, he has come, is there looking, just there looking out. And I tell him, oh, honey, babe, are you all right? Do you want something to eat? I have actually prepared for you something that you'd like. He gets his things slowly, guys, dragging his feet, dragging, gets his car thing, he eats, he eats. Ah, the power now has shifted. We would move on. The day has ended. I tell you, and the ones who forget, they forget. So, and then when that has passed is when I would come back and say, but you know, Teji, that wasn't nice. It also hurt me how what you did. And then that's when we would talk. Now in the moment, ignore, ignore, I do not deal, terrorists are not my fault. I cannot assist a terrorist. <laughs> um, without sounding unfair is the way we are raising our children today, the number of children we have in our family units um, is getting smaller and smaller. And we are 
basically raising entitled little. So when, when a child feels entitled, they'll not go out of their way to communicate. They'll feel the best way to get the message across is to misbehave. So I would definitely go with what Pumla says that more mothers should learn to ignore. I know it's very difficult. It was also very difficult for me, but over the years I learned, the second you entertain this conversation, then it looks like we're having a conversation. I and mean, the truth is that we are not because you have not been able to comprehend what I am saying to you. So you need to give them time where either they, they you know, shout it out or throw themselves all over the place. Though in my house, you do that, I'll smack you until next week. But yes, yeah, so I know it could be a call for attention, but I think it's also important that we learn to ignore our children. Then it's also, I think, especially with tantrums, discipline should always be done in private. When a child has a tantrum in the supermarket, it does not help for you to start spanking them because you're stressing the rest of us out. So it's best, you know, you take it in your stride, either you ignore, you try to keep the child calm, and then when you get home, you unleash whatever, you know, you, you, you do to, yeah, to get them to get them in order. But I, I, I find a lot of parents have these days, you know, you, you, you listen to your child, you do what your child wants, and then you wake up one day and you have this six, seven year old who's throwing themselves on a, a, the ground of a supermarket, and then you're trying to discipline them at that moment. No, or you're trying to ignore them at that moment. No, they're making noise for all of us. So I think, um, I, I'll, I'll go with Pumna. My kids are way older, but that worked then, it's worked for Teja, and I'm sure it will work for the person who has a one-year-old as well. Absolutely, I am team ignore, <laughs> because I know if I get in there, I'm going to get frustrated, and then we are going to just so I ignore. I ignore except when, of course, they are endangering their lives, so if they are hitting their heads on those, because there are kids who do that, who throw tantrums by maybe hitting themselves on a wall, um, if their life is in danger and if another child's life is in danger or maybe they are smacking another child, then I will, of course, separate uh, my son from, from that child. But I am absolutely team ignore. The other thing that I think I would do, especially if it's like in a supermarket, I, I will remove the child. If it means I stop the shopping, I will stop the shopping. But I'm not going to be embarrassed by your tantrum that you are lying there on the floor and I'm busy being judged about how not that i care but like yeah i will get you out we'll go to the car you'll sit down and if you you come then like pumla that's when i now have the conversation about what you're doing is not right you can't throw a tantrum i told you to do something i asked you to do something and you didn't do it so yes there's definitely a place for ignoring but don't ignore and then ignore the lesson therein because that tantrum is also a teachable moment so when the child is calm then sit them down and explain to them. Again, you want to be able to have that conversation that what you're doing is not cool. And then of course, if, if they are doing it in public and you know things in a supermarket, my dear, glasses could break. I came with specific money for shopping <laughs> and you want to break people's things? No thanks, no, 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 no. So I'll drag you, take you to the car. Once you are calm, then we shall, then we shall move on. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely team ignore. But what I would advise is that don't ignore and then ignore also the lesson therein, that it's important you wrap it up nicely. When the child has come over and they are hungry, give them food and say, but now what you did, Sebo, not cool, not cool at all. <laughs> so I kind of feel like this show, I wasn't supposed to be here. Um, <laughs> so I'm not team ignore, I'm team avoid. Like I'm absolute team avoid. I don't... Like, even when you ask me, like, my kids throwing tantrums, like, me, I hear stories that people, like, kids throw tantrums. Because for me, I did everything in my power to avoid tantrums as much as possible. And I like the intro uh, that Pumla gave. The only reason for a tantrum is because a child is going through a certain strong emotion that they, they don't have the words to communicate. Right, so they are either angry, they are disappointed, they are sad. There's so many emotions that they are going through. So it's not just because, and, and I mean, like we said, like Pumla so rightly said, even us adults, we go through it. Like 
You want something, you don't get it, you get angry. Uh, you want a certain job, they give it to somebody else, you get angry. Like what they're going through is normal. And for me, that's a thing for me. Like I, I keep telling people that don't make kids feel like the emotions they are feeling are wrong. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to get angry because I do to date. The question is then what do you do? Like what's the action after that emotion? So I'm really about acknowledging emotions but not the action that comes from this. So it's okay to feel this way. It's just not okay to throw yourself on the floor. And so for me, I was team avoid. Um, I very early taught my kids emotions, even before they could speak, they could show me an emotion on a chart and, and show me like this one is on and the angry one is looking like, ah, and the, you know, so that I, 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 and if I would see that they are going to get sad about something, we immediately we go to our chat and say like which one is this one that you are feeling now 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 way before it becomes too much and then also knowing that my child can't communicate like they don't have the what i always gave them options for what might be like upsetting them before it, like we get upset so do you want a car no do you want a plate no do you want way before they get frustrated. So I would really work down here before, <laughs> before it becomes too bad, like I would work. And then also I knew kids throw tantrums in supermarkets. Like my child is not an adult. Like why would I take them to a supermarket where there's toy cars and I'm not going to buy toy cars? Like in the words of Tamale Mirud, what were you thinking? Why would you go with a child in a supermarket? Why? Why, why, do, why do you want to do this to yourself? You understand? Why would you take them to a party when you don't want them to eat cake? Why would you take them to situations that would enhance this, this feel, especially when they can't communicate it? Now, when my kids could start communicating, like for example, like Blake and Bianca, they are getting older, they, are, they can use their words. My avoidance became before we go. So before we go to a party, I sit down. I say, so guys, you're going to go to a party and there's going to be a bouncing castle. There's going to be a swimming pool. There's going to be this, there's going to be that. Now let's talk a bit. One, we can't hit children. Two, you know, I wouldn't say the negative would be like one, we love everybody and we play with everybody. And two, we ask for permission. Three, we follow instruction. And then I'll tell them, what did I say? Like we'd go through this again so that we avoid the tantrum. And then I would very specifically say, if you feel angry and you don't know what to do with yourself, walk away, okay? Because even me, I walk away. Like when I come and I'm upset and I'll be like, who did, you know what guys, I need to cool down. I'll see you in a few. And then I, myself, I walk away. So even to date, when the kids get upset and they get angry, the first thing they do is they, they'll be like, mommy, let me, let me come. Let me, let me cool down. Let me, let me, let me come back because I'm also big on use your words. I don't hear tears. Like that's not a language. Tears is not a language. I need to hear words. So I understand that you're going through an emotion. I acknowledge your emotion. I feel your emotion, but it's just at the point of communication, I won't hear you. So just give yourself a break, give yourself some time, go cool down, then come. So I've always been, always, team avoids. So yeah, not even, like, so ignore never ever reached me. I was just like, avoid, <laughs> avoid, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Manuela, you, you mentioned that um, your children haven't had tantrums, of course, because you're better equipped to deal with, with um, these things. And then, of course, you have two kids. If you had like uh, Zay, six, eight, maybe it could be slightly different. You don't have enough time to you know, deal with all of them. My question is, you raise these children all the same, but like my sons, no tantrums. I, I saw the first tantrum with Asante. It didn't last long, but I saw it. It's just like, you see writing on walls. I'm like, how? It's like you go to people's houses and they have two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and all their beautiful things are packed away. And I'm like, how? So my question is, maybe you could help um, mothers or myself you know, there are things we do, but we really don't know what steps we are using to get to that result. So if somebody else asked me, I'd be like, okay, I was strict. 
okay, I left my things there. And I say, no, every time they touch. So by the time they were older, they knew that you're not supposed to touch. But what are those, because um, you spoke of avoidance, right? But in the event that the child is already um, having the tantrums, how would you best handle those apart from ignoring or avoiding? So that's a great question. So yes, if my child, like say, for example, there were times they would bring children to the cradle who are already full blown tantrum holders and um, would do what, you know, what you guys spoke about, um, especially Rachel, like, are they in the safe, are they in a safe environment, take them away. So we had so many kids at the, at the cradle who were not throwing tantrums because they had been with us for a while, but you'd get a new child who was like, and they would be like screaming out loud, like, and your ears would, would, you know, get, you know, kind of like shrilled. So you'd, you'd remove them from the situation immediately. Um, and then as long as they're nowhere near hurting themselves and someone is watching for them, you let them go through it until they realize like, man, here, yeah, they are not, you know, you'd use that ignore principle. But one of my main principles, like I have always shared with parents is to buy by your nose. Um, I don't know if, I, let me see if I can explain it. So for example, you know that your child, every time you go to the supermarket, they want a toy, right? So try going to the supermarket to get a toy. So that when you do have to say no to the toy, they're like, oh wait, that time she took me and all we did was get the toys. So now that she has said no, I think things are serious. This time, mm, looks, things are serious. So for me, that's like buying my no, especially when it doesn't hurt. Like, for example, you're going to buy Christmas gifts or you're going to buy birthday gifts. Instead of you going and buying that toy, go with that child. So they're like, nah, there's a day when mommy takes me to the supermarket and all we do is look for a toy. Yeah, and then they look for a toy and then they buy that toy and then they are like five. So that, that day you say, no toys. They're like, oh, what? Yeah, that day she said yes, but now it looks, she has said, she has said no. Um, I used to do it a lot, like when I was picking up my kids, they used to finish school really early, and then they would want to play. And I'd be like, fine, play. And parents would look at me like, come on, Manuela, like it's time to go home. And I'm like, friends, me here, my duty is to buy my next no. So we are playing, they are playing, they're having fun. Now we go to a party, and I need to end the party early. So I call them up. I said, guys, you have three minutes. Mommy, please, just five more minutes. I'm like, okay, cool, five minutes. They came, like, they would have wanted to play for hours on end, but they're like, man, if we could play, she would have said yes. Because that time at school, she said yes. Mm, even at the other time at this one, she said yes. What have you she said? No, Chidavika, you know, this is a serious no. And I keep telling parents, keep your nose. Like, I hold my nose very special. My no is special. I don't just say it, I hold it. So that the day I say no, instead of throwing a tantrum, they're in wonderment, like, eh? she said no. Because she usually says yes. There are times I even preempt the yes. Like I said, don't you want to play outside? Come play outside. Don't you want to play in the rain? Come play in the rain. Don't I preempt my yeses as a form of buying my no's. Now the day you come that you want to play in hailstones, I'm like, no. Not playing in the rain today. Like, she never because stuff is tight, okay? And then they'll just ask like a simple why. And I'll say, because there's hailstones and there's lightning and there's thunder. And so you will not play in the rain today. Okay. And then they move on. I just vote my no. You can't be the anger for you. The only language you know is no, no, no. Don't touch. Don't, don't, no, don't buy your, hold them like gold. Yeah. I think for me, that's what has, that's what has really helped with. I think why I really like what you said is that now we can see the difference between I have experience, you are a professional. So you base everything you said for us, uh, Friday we used to have movie night, we'd carry all the mattresses into the sitting room and would throw them there and they spend the night. So I used to do those things without, should I say, knowing you know, that this is how things are supposed to be done. It's like, for example, when we go to the supermarket, when you go with dad, look at toys. You go with mom, push the cart. You don't hear. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I think I was doing everything 
that you speak of in a structured manner, but by just, you know, getting into it. So I think there are some moms who, as you said, maybe the scheduling might not work, or if they start putting things down, then you start thinking parenting or mothering is becoming a job rather than something that you can do. So I'm also thinking to those who are not good with having structure, just be a mom. Because at the end of the day, everything you've spoken about, I haven't learned anything about early childhood development or anything. At the end of the day, if you love your child and you want the best for them, you will actually be doing what is written in the books. Wow, some interesting nuggets there. I think also just that preparation before you go into a place, but also if you're going into a supermarket and you know your child obviously is going to want a toy, don't 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 do that to yourself. Don't don't get in there and then expect them to behave like an adult. You know that you can control yourself. You see that nice thing that you can't have because you don't have money, but your child has not yet gotten to that level. So some interesting lessons from you ladies. Thank you so much for sharing. How are you handling tantrums in your home? Of course, we recognize that there are children who have um, uh, behavioral deficiencies and you know that managing of tantrums is slightly different. You know, it takes a whole level of grace and just educating yourself on your child's behavior and how you're meant to behave. And something that Rosette keeps saying, um, learning the, the, the art of staying calm uh, and just talking to your child because your, your child's role model of what it means to be calm and centered even in the midst of frustration. So please do not uh, get frustrated while your child is getting frustrated. So interesting stuff. Please do share how you manage tantrums in your homes. Are you team ignore? Are you team avoid? Um, and I hope that you have learned something from this episode. Until next time, we love from Bangkok.